talk more about the markets for 2024. Paul Schatz is with us, President Chief Investment Officer, Heritage Capital, where you, you said you were screaming from the balconies. And we remember you came on. You had a time that you were cautious, and then you came on and you said, this is it. This is the year of the bull. You were all gung-ho about everything. And um, that was 2023. Now what? Right? You feel good about 2023. I know that. I felt great. Listen, a year ago, we were full of fear and despondency and terror. And then now we came into this year, and I feel like people have done a, um, almost a 180 where got a lot of giddiness, a lot of beating of the chest, a lot of bragging. So I think 2024 is not going to look anything like 2023. I think 2024, one, my, my two themes are, one, we're going to punish the latecomers, what, be it stocks, be it Bitcoin, be it gold. Anybody who came late to the party at the end of 2023 is going to get punished the first half of 2024. I think it's going to be a bumpy a little turbulent ride through the first four or five months of 2024. With that said, now if you fasten your seatbelts and we get past the Ohio Valley on the way to California, the second two thirds of the trip, second half of the trip, you could stand up, have some food, drink, socialize, watch a movie. It's going to be smooth and clear sailing. All in all, 11 to 15 percent rally in the S&P when all said and done this, you know, 11 and a half months from now. That's amazing. So what's going to be the what's going to be the that moment, that changing moment? Is it when the Fed actually starts cutting rates? Is it when we start to have some clarity on the election? Lord, I hope the Fed doesn't cut rates. So a couple things to unpack there. Number one, the presidential elections have absolutely no bearing on the financial markets until you get to Halloween. The media obsesses about it. But as an investor, there's not a single piece of data going back a couple of hundred years that suggests the markets are going to have are going to have any impact from the election. Wait, wait to the last week, then you can worry about it. Between now and then, don't. And and I'll say this: there's a couple of good tidbits. You know, last year I said to you, since 1939, when Hitler invaded Poland, he never had a down pre-election year. This year, not since Herbert Hoover and the Great Depression. Have you had an incumbent running for re-election? Joe Biden is. And the market's been down. So I think what's going to change? Oh, we had an enormous run last year, the whole year, breath. And then you look at the fourth quarter and then the end of the year. It, you know, stocks went vertical, not like the dot-com bubble, but in that kind of fashion, without any pause. Normally, when you have that kind of run, you punish the latecomers over the subsequent quarter or so. So I think the market just has to catch up with fundamentals the first quarter and a half of 2024. I hope the Fed does not cut rates, Nicole. I hope they stay flat for a while. Um, people, should be, people shouldn't always celebrate cutting rates. 2001, we went down 45% after the first rate cut. 2007 went down 58 percent. Of course, it doesn't happen every rate cut cycle. But I don't think the Fed needs to cut rates. And to, and to, to keep some credibility, I think they're going to keep rates in that five and a quarter area for longer. And I hope they do. Right. I mean, the, you know, the bets are on. But once summer comes in, once you're up to June, it's 100 percent certainty that we're going to be getting some rate cuts. Um, can we get to some of the names that you do like for 2024? You have uh, Tyler Technologies. Tell me about that one. So Tyler Tech, uh, former high flyer. So it's a software company and they're in the business of supplying uh, products to the private, uh, private, to the public sector, government schools, et cetera. We already know about the massive stimulus coming out of Washington, especially it's gonna be dumped in the economy. Happened a little last year, more is coming this year. ESG, DEI, that all responds with increased software. They're hyper growth mode, they're dominant player in the industry, all the things you like to see. Rhode Island just gave another contract. It's the fourth time, you know, so in a micro sense, the fourth time the stock is bumping up against um, the same level. And I think probably in the next 12 to 18 months, 30-ish percent rally to the 550 area. 
All right. And then you also have uh, Tegna and Rocket Companies as your other two names. Right. So Tegna, listen, I, I do this, I think I do this every four years. Uh, election season's coming. No surprise. November 5th. Uh, Tegna owns TV stations. So I, I can't believe you're not going to see a record amount of spend in, at the congressional level, the Senate level, certainly at the presidential level. That bodes well for Tegna. Uh, they've got enormous free cash flow. 500 and something million dollars per year free cash flow. That's really good. They were part of two takeover attempts that got held up uh, by the government. There is so that to me there is that bid beneath the surface that says the stock could go back to the you know the low 20s at some point, which I think is in the next you know one to two years, and that'd be a 50 percent run from here. So it, it's a shorter term, you know, it's a one to two year play. And then the the rocket companies was your third pick. So this is an old pick. I, you know, I got on board when rocket collapsed because of rates spiking in in 2022. The stocks had a really good pullback. So you think about it. It's a really fragmented sector. They're an enormous industry leader. They have massive um, amount of market share growth. Uh, higher rates hammered it. They it stock recently corrected 15 down to 11 ish, or probably is you know, an 11 and change right now. I think that one is a double, uh, 12 to 18 months. All right. Thank you so much, Paul Schatz. Uh, you know, at least you provided some clarity on your thoughts here for 2024. So the first part could be bumpy and some of those late comers might get hit, but the back half, as you said, uh, smooth. Right. Was that your you phrase? know, weekly yeah, smooth and early, sailing, I think you said. Half. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Paul Schatz. Thanks, Nicole. Heritage Capital. Thank you, Paul.